Hey explorers, we're back in the lab today with a spectacularly fun slime experiment. That's right, we're making magnetic slime. Now, slime might seem to be nothing more than a fun activity, but did you realize that when we're making slime at home, we're actually practicing and learning science? Some concepts involved in our magnetic slime are cross-linking, polymers, states of matter, and magnetism. Let's get right to it and give this experiment a whirl! Materials we'll need to make our magnetic slime are washable white glue, water, baking soda, iron oxide powder, iron filings, contact lens solution, neodymium magnets, a Ziploc bag, and some measuring utensils. First, we're going to pour our water and glue into a Ziploc bag. This experiment can be messy, so the Ziploc bag is meant to contain the mess. All right, so we're gonna start with our one cup of white glue. Into the bag. All right, then one cup of water. The water goes in. All right. Now we're going to stir our mixture well so they blend. Glue contains polyvinyl acetate molecules, which are long polymer molecules that are tangled with each other. Now that we've got our water and glue combined, we can add our contact lens solution. When you're buying your contact lens solution, make sure it contains the key ingredient for this slime, sodium borate. If you saw the episode we did making alginate gummy worms, you may remember the sodium alginate polymers cross-linking with the calcium chloride solution. So we are putting two tablespoons of contact lens solution. I think this is going to make a lot of slime, so I'm pretty excited. All right, there is one. There is our second tablespoon. Okay, we'll mix that up some more. In this experiment, adding the contact solution with sodium borate to glue leads to hydrogen bonding between the borate ions and the acetate groups in the glue. Each borate ion may bind with up to four oxygen atoms in the same or neighboring PVAC molecules. The result is the creation of a large, fluid, three-dimensional network of polymer molecules. The process by which borate ions tie together neighboring polymer molecules is called cross-linking, and the resulting network of polymer molecules forms a gel that traps water molecules. And that is what we call slime. And now we're going to add a tablespoon of baking soda. Adding baking soda to your slime helps give it form and firmness. And mixing it up some more. Now we need this for a bit while our slime forms. Oh yeah, it's definitely like goopy. All right, we're gonna need this until it stops sticking to the bag so much. Then we're gonna add our iron and make it magnetic. You can see it's pulling right off the bag. That's exactly what we wanna see. We are getting that oopy goopy slime. Ah, and now I'm trapped. Now that our slime is reaching the right consistency, we're going to add our iron powder and filings. We're going to add a tablespoon of each. Okay, and now our iron filings. Nice big filings. Again, getting one tablespoon. And adding our iron filings now, adding our combination iron filings and iron powder is going to make our slime especially magnetic. The iron will remain in the polymer by the force of adhesion. Knead the mixture in the bag until the filings and powder are evenly distributed through your slime. You can easily tell which slime has the iron and which doesn't because of the coloring. This will take a couple minutes, but it does look like it's working out really well. and We're going to get some very cool magnetic slime out of this. That looks like the iron's all the way through. It's made a lot of slime. 
If you do notice that you're having a problem and it's not hitting the right consistency, you can open it up, let a little more air inside, then closing it again and continuing to knead can help finish the process. I think my slime is ready, so I'm just going to try pouring it right out onto my table. Mmm. Oh, that's very cool. So yeah, this one is a little bit more of a goop, like it is just a little bit more liquid, but it's still holding together very well. Oop. And yeah, I'm very glad we did this in a Ziploc bag because slimes can be so messy, but this process has really eliminated a bunch of that mess. Glad I'm wearing white, tell you that. It's close to the consistency we want, but not quite there yet, so I'm going to need it a little bit more. Ugh. Oh yeah, that is nice and slimy. Eee. Oh, that is a very, very cool slime. Our slime is just about right, but if yours is still a little too liquid, you can add some more baking soda, a tablespoon at a time, to help firm it up. Though, this is a slime you definitely want a little bit more liquid. So our slime is a really great consistency now. It'll flow, it'll form to its container, but at the same point it's still got some firmness, and we can control, shape it into things, mold it if we want to. Our slime's ready, so now we can clean up the lab and get ready to observe our slime in action. Science! Okay, explorers, we've got our neodymium magnets, otherwise known as rare earth magnets. A magnet is a material that produces a magnetic field, a strange force around it that attracts other materials that contain iron. The iron oxide and filings in your slime contain iron, which means when you put a magnet next to it, all of those particles are pulled towards the magnet because of its magnetic force. A regular magnet isn't strong enough though. For this experiment, you're going to need something stronger, a neodymium magnet. These magnets are extremely powerful and are also known as rare earth magnets collect our slime together. Oh, our oopy goopy magnetic slime. Yeah. I'm just gonna make this a little flatter because I've always been curious about blowing bubbles in slime. <laughs> Woo! There we go. Okay, now we got our neodymium. Don't wanna get too close. Oh. We're stretching our bubble. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> now comes the best part. We just get to have fun with our slime. So we've got our neodymium bar magnet, and I'm gonna see how close to it I can get before it starts attracting the slime. Right there, I can already feel in the bar a little bit. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you can see it pulling it towards it. Oh, and then, it, oh! Oh, it just pulls it right in. Oh, that is cool. It's attaching to it and it's just pulling it in and eating the magnet. Just like in our ferrofluid episode where we used iron filings and a liquid, now I want to try playing with it through the table. Oh, it definitely holds the magnet. Oh, yeah, and we can make the slime kind of crawl around. Make that slime into a bubbly, walking, monstrous mess. Very, very cool. We've got our slime, a taped down magnet, and our other neodymium magnet. And I'm going to use a magnet underneath the table to walk some slime over and eat our bar magnet. And there it goes. Oh, it's just like slowly eating it. And it is trying to pull it away from the tape as well. So now 
we have our magnetic slime. It's a fairly easy slime experiment, but can get very messy and the ingredients should definitely not be ingested. You also need to be especially diligent when using neodymium magnets, like we did today in our observations. They can easily snap and are also a choking hazard. Adult supervision is required for this experiment. For more fun in the lab, subscribe to Clayton's Exploration Station on YouTube and social media. Plus, if you have any fun ideas for experiments we should try, email us at info at explorationstation.net. Now if you need me, I'll be here in the lab playing with my magnetic slime. You stay curious, explorers. Station.